Hello, my name is Courtney Palacero, and this is a project looking at the urban heat island effect in the Twin Cities metro area. I use GIS to investigate what characteristics make a neighborhood most vulnerable to the urban heat island effect. The urban heat island effect describes how urban areas are warmer than surrounding areas. This is due to the excess pavement, buildings, and other developments that absorb heat and release it in the urban areas. On the other hand, the more rural areas have more trees, green space, and water that cool the area by reflecting sunlight and through transpiration and evaporation. A report by the Minnesota Pollution Agency found that in the Twin Cities, there's about a two to five degree difference between urban and surrounding areas. And in the evening, there can be as high as a 22 degree difference. The figure on the left illustrates the nighttime difference in temperature between Minneapolis and St. Paul compared to the surrounding suburbs. This urban heat island can cause problems related to human health. The graph on the right shows the relationship between temperature and heat-related emergency department visits. Recently, there seems to be an increase in heat-related emergency department visits. So who is vulnerable to the urban heat island effect? This article found that 125 more million people were vulnerable to heat waves from 2000 to 2016. Specifically, the elderly are at risk. On the right, we see a great picture of what lengths people must go to to cool themselves off during a heat wave. This journal article looks further into vulnerability to urban heat. Vulnerable groups include Black and Hispanic populations, the linguistically and socially isolated, low housing values, and older adults. This article agrees the lower socioeconomic and ethnic minority groups are more vulnerable to heat stress. Further, the authors explain that these populations have the least amount of open space for things like trees and parks, which are associated with cooling. Also, they have the least amount of social and material resources to mitigate the heat. There are many benefits of having green space in a city, including space for exercise and activity for residents, pollution reduction, and stress relief. But related to this project, green space can provide a city better shading and cooling, allowing a city to be more resilient to heat stress. Research has been done measuring how large of an impact green space can have on cooling. One article found that increasing tree cover in a city by 10% can reduce the total energy for heating and cooling by 5 to 10%. The specific goal of this project was to use GIS to find neighborhoods in the Twin Cities metro that should be targeted for urban warming mitigation. The three characteristics of neighborhoods that I looked at were what neighborhoods were demographically vulnerable, including minority, poor, and old populations, what neighborhoods were hot, which was assessed through land surface temperature, and what neighborhoods lacked nature amenities, which include the presence of trees, grass, and water. Next, I evaluated the relationship between these three neighborhood characteristics. Based off of the previous literature on what demographic characteristics make a neighborhood vulnerable, I measured vulnerability by the following variables. Percent poverty, percent English speaking, percent over 65 years old, percent rent burdened, and percent white. My demographic data came from the 2010 census and from the American Community Survey five-year summary file from 2011 to 2015. This graph illustrates the vulnerability level of different block groups. The more red, the more relatively high vulnerability from a demographic standpoint. Notice all the red in the center. The blue represents water features and the black lines show the seven counties in the metro area. Next, I wanted to see what neighborhoods were the hottest. I used data from the Metropolitan Council that had a raster from a satellite image that showed land surface temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. In essence, this map shows how hot the ground was to touch at any given location. Again, notice the red in the center of the map, illustrating higher temperatures in the urban part of the metro. Next, I wanted to find neighborhoods that were lacking nature amenities because the literature suggests these areas would tend to be hotter. I used data from the 2015 Twin Cities Metropolitan Area Urban Tree Canopy Assessment to measure how prevalent nature amenities like trees, grass, and water were in each neighborhood. Here we see the range of neighborhood nature amenities. 
Again, we see more red in the center of the map. Here are all three of the maps that represent vulnerability to urban heat island effect. These maps show a similar pattern, with more vulnerability to urban heat in the center than in the surrounding areas. Now it's time to look more in depth into the relationship between the three neighborhood characteristics. To evaluate these relationships, I created scatter plots and then ran an ordinary least regression. First, here is the relationship between land surface temperature and vulnerability. There seems to be a positive correlation between the two. The hotter the neighborhood is, the more demographically vulnerable the neighborhood is. Next, here is the relationship between land surface temperature and neighborhood nature amenities. There seems to be a pretty strong negative relationship between the two. The hotter the neighborhood is, the less prevalence of nature amenities. Lastly, we see a slightly negative relationship between vulnerability and neighborhood amenities. The more vulnerable the neighborhood is, the lower prevalence of nature amenities. Now that we have seen the variable relationships spatially, I wanted to evaluate how strong the relationships were. The strongest relationship was between land surface temperature and nature amenities. As mentioned earlier, it is a negative relationship. The regression indicated that 56% of land surface temperature and nature amenities were associated together. The next strongest relationship was between land surface temperature and demographic vulnerability. This was a positive relationship. The regression indicated that 24% of land surface temperature and demographic vulnerability were associated together. Lastly, there is a negative correlation between vulnerability and nature amenities. The regression indicated that 22% of nature amenities and demographic vulnerability were associated together. In conclusion, there are significant relationships between land surface temperature, demographic vulnerability, and nature amenities. Further, there seems to be similar trends where the most vulnerable of these characteristics is in the center of metro area than compared to the outside suburb areas. Lastly, mitigation of urban warming must target all three neighborhood characteristics. So how can we mitigate the urban heat island effect? This article illustrates how we can use green space to reduce heat stress. Specifically, the authors found that with every increase in green space by one square kilometer per 1,000 people can prevent 7.4 mortalities related to heat. This article provides more examples of how we can add nature amenities to our cities. Examples include highly reflective pavement, trees and vegetation, green space, green roofs, and bodies of water. But it is more complicated than just adding green space and nature amenities to any open area. These authors remind us that the more demographically vulnerable neighborhoods are going to be the areas with the least amount of open space for tree planting and parks. So we must find a way to add nature amenities to these areas. Again, this article explains that we can't just add green roofs and expect cities to be cooled. Instead, we must target our mitigation strategies to the most at-risk residents and start a blueprint for urban heat island mitigation from there. This is the challenge I leave you with. Here are the data sources used for this project. And here are my references. Thank you for listening.